Hmm. Do you think so too? Yeah. Do about it. Hold off for a while. But I wonder how those are. This is Officer Chambers from Stars Bravo Team. Please identify yourself. Is someone there? The Research Center? <gasps> the first general manager, Dr. James Marcus. Who on earth are those people? She's just a rookie, a member of STARS. Hmm, what about the mail? I'm unfamiliar with Attention! Mm -hmm. This is Dr. Marcus. Please be silent as we reflect upon our company motto. Obedience breeds discipline. Discipline breeds unity. Unity breeds power. Power is life. <laughs> who are you? It was I who scattered the T-virus in the mansion. Needless to say, I contaminated the train, too. What? Revenge on Umbrella. ago, Dr. Marcus was murdered by Umbrella. You helped them, didn't you? <laughs>
Carl and Damon here from Games, Brains and Headbanging Alive, GBHBL.com for short, and it's flashback time as we're going to the one Resident Evil game we haven't covered from the early days. It is Resident Evil Zero, the survival horror video game developed and published by Capcom and originally released for the GameCube in 2002. It is a prequel to Resident Evil from 1996 and its remake in 2002. Covering the ordeals experienced in the Arclight Mountains by a special police force unit, the Stars Bravo team. The story follows officer Rebecca Chambers, remember her, and the convicted criminal Billy Cohen, who, as they explore an abandoned training facility for employees of the pharmaceutical company Umbrella. The gameplay is similar to other Resident Evil games, but includes a unique partner zapping system, where the player controls both Billy, Re Billy and Rebecca at the same time, switch control between them to solve puzzles and use their abilities. As always, things we like, things we don't like, favorite moments, scenes, and bits of music. And I'll start with something I like, which is that this is part of the exclusive Nintendo deal that was great for GameCube owners, which was us. We had a GameCube, we got all these cool games, we got the remake, and then we got this game as well, a brand new Resident Evil game. So more of that was always gonna be pleasing. You know, you got the kind of thumb your nose at PlayStation owners going, ha ha, look at us, we're getting a brand new Resident Evil game. And it looks like the remake, which everybody loved. Yes, go us. Yeah, definitely. Yes, I, I, I was always a positive. Um, I mean, I, I was I, I was not really a big fan of this game, mm. but I mean, it's it's, it's Resident Evil, so yeah. no, there we go. That's my that's my first like. No, that's a fair point. You're right. Um, I never was a big fan of this game. I'm a bigger fan now because I uh, I properly got into it in the re-release with the achievements in the Xbox One, and a couple of the achievements were like doing certain things on a, on a certain difficulty that made me play it a different way. And it became more appreciated of it overall. It has flaws, but we'll get to them. Um, but the story, you know, overall, it's pretty good. The fact we're following the Bravo team and where we're going with that and how it links into the Resident Evil franchise overall, it's pretty good, I'd say. Yeah, I, I, I mean, the, the last time I played this game must have been you know, well over 10 years ago. Really? I mean, it, quite a while ago, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I remember completing it. But my knowledge of this game is, is completely gone. But I mean, really? I, yeah, I, I mean, I'm trying. I, I, I presume you obviously you, you learn obviously who Billy is. Kind of, yeah. But, but I, I mean, I, I like I like the fact that you get to learn more of Rebecca's storyline. Yeah. Because I, I mean, obviously, me, me being a bit obviously a fan of Rose Neal's and obviously reading the books, you know, Rebecca's quite a big part of the book. I, I know, you, I know, you're going to say, I know, you're going to say, obviously, she's quite a big part of the books. But so it's canon. Well, yeah, but it, it makes you it makes you in, more interested to, to learn more about Rebecca's story. He does this all the time. If you watch his videos regularly, he referenced these fucking books as if they're an important aspect of the Resident Evil. They're no longer canon. They were canon once, then they're now considered non-canon. Come on, Damon. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't read the Star Wars novels and go, well, that's part of the uh, the film storyline. No, no, of course, but obviously the, the, the books are based a lot around, around Rebecca's story too, which is quite good. And um, I, I like the fact that you that, that you get to obviously play her and learn a bit more about her background and stuff like that. Fine. To stop, I'm fine with your like. Uh, you, it's your choice to stop bringing the damn books into it. <laughs> uh, some interesting locations. The train, the opening segment of the train, uh, the fact that the training facility, while it is a bit like close to the mansion style, it's got some interesting areas within that and the idea that this was where they were beforehand. I think it's a cool little touch. Yeah, some interesting locations. I ain't got any more. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Okay, cool. And the last one then, my last one. It was something I never cared about back when I played it in the GameCube, but I found I actually loved it on the, and the re, uh, remastering version. Leech Hunter, the mini game. We have to run around in a small set place and collect the colored leeches. And you've got limited inventory space. And the more leech leeches hunt, le the, the leeches you collect, the less room you've got. Very, very challenging. Very, very cool. I had a blast with Leech Hunter, especially with the difficult achievements attached to it. Made me into, I actually recorded videos on the web, uh, the YouTube channel of me doing like the perfect Leech Hunter run with all the 50 gems and stuff like that. That's how much fun I had with that.
Okay. Things we don't like then. Let's get the what let's get the biggest one, I think, for it, which is this new system of dropping items and having no item boxes. While interesting at first, is actually just a lesson in frustration. It's just a lesson in frustration. As you put something down, like I, I ended up basically trying to make the main hall of the training facility where I left everything. Because I hated it. If you left it, you could forget. I know it showed you on the map where you left stuff, but it didn't help. And so my, my, my entry area was covered and the floor was covered in items. But even then, you can only put so many things down in one room. And I hated that because certain things cost two blocks of space in a six inventory space system. Yeah. And you could, you could realistically put something down that you will need later on and have to do some long ass trek back to try and get it. I, I didn't like it. Just give me item boxes, guys. Yeah, that definitely sounds, uh, but it will definitely be frustrating, definitely. Mm. Uh, so uh, I mentioned in the, in the likes, but um, I've got down, obviously, Rebecca's. Rebecca as a character, yeah, not, not, not that interesting. You know, compared to Chris or Jill or Leon or Claire, yeah, not, not interesting at all. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Um, I'm going to talk about the other one, though. I think Billy is a waste of time. Uh, Billy Cohen, his whole thing is that, oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm suspected to be a villain who was an army guy who killed all his men, but it turns out that I disobeyed an order and they have been strung up for it and I'm actually a good guy and all that. And it's just like, ugh, whatever, whatever. It means nothing. We don't, he's never seen again in another Resident Evil game. Billy Cohen, waste of time. Bland. Pointless, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I've gone for the... Um, it's the um, the dual control one. Yeah. So I think I, I, it was completely unreasonable. Like. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and and uh, I didn't I, I, I didn't get it really. Be, be both, to be, I mean, the whole point of Resident Evil Survivor Horror is running around by yourself, being being on your own, facing mm -hmm. yourself, not having two people to switch back and forwards. It's arguable that this was their first attempt at doing what would become the standard bearer going mm -hmm. forward where you'd have two people. All right, we get Resident Evil 4, which was Leon on his own for the most part, but there were moments in that where you two people. But after that, every, all Resident Evil did was team-ups. And let's face it, every, 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 I mean, other than probably Sheva number five, it didn't really work, did it really? I, I, I don't think so. I think you've forgotten how crap Sheva was. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, probably have, actually, yeah. <laughs> um, the issues... The issues the story creates with the next game. So this is simply the obvious one uh, re 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 surrounding Rebecca. There are, to do to, for Resident Evil Zero to exist, you have to accept something that doesn't make sense. So when you meet Rebecca in Resident Evil originally, she's an idiot. She's scared. Um, do you not think she would have mentioned at any point to Chris, "Oh, all this stuff going on around me, I've seen already at a different facility." Now they try and do the whole thing. It's because she's trying to keep Billy's side of the story quiet. She could still talk about the events that happened to her previously. You know, what happened to Bravo team, Rebecca? Well, I got on this train. There was a giant slug monster man. Um, I went into, you know, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And we've got to pretend that that's okay. That it just doesn't happen, you know? Well, you've got, well yeah, exactly. So it, it's like they, they kind of cut the whole part and, and, and trying to forget about it. They're, they're trying to retcon Rebecca's part of the story. Mm. Yeah. You got any more? Uh, one, two. No, that's it. I've got two more, and it's specific to enemies in the game. Giant bat boss in the church. God, yes. Oh, he's so annoying to kill because he has smaller bats flying around. And you have to aim up high. It's, it's constantly out of shot because of the camera angle. And you will shoot and often hit the small bats and they just keep coming back and you try and hit this big bat and then if he picks you up you drop to the floor he can almost kill you horrible boss horrible boss but nothing compared to something that isn't even a boss the worst enemy in all of Resident Evil games because it can kill you in one it can kill you in one because during this period you are split up so Billy and uh, Rebecca are split up so if one of them gets into trouble you cannot save them and it's the giant toads. And the giant toads will jump out of the water in the last sequence. And one of their moves 
is, is to grab you with a tongue and start dragging you towards them. You cannot get out of it. You require help from a partner. Your partner is unavailable. You will die instantly. And on the difficulty with the achievement related to where you only get to save twice, oh my fucking God, the giant frogs, whoever thought of that? Oh yeah, they can kill you on one, but no one will be there to save you. I forgot about that. I forgot yeah. about that, thing, yeah. Infuriating. All right, end on some positives then. Favourite moments, scenes, or bits of music? Do you have anything? I mean, it's 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 still it's still a Resident Evil game, so you still got to play it. If you're if you're a fan of Resident Evil, you've got to play it. Fair. I'm just going to go with the opening train segment. I think the opening train, the entire opening say, train segment, from the moment you get on it to the moment it crashes, is the best part of Resident Evil Zero. It's the most unique looking. It's a different environment. It introduces all these clever little things. All right, there's a random scorpion, giant scorpion battle, which is really fucking weird. But the part where you go on the roof mm -hmm. and you've got the wind blown past you, it looks awesome. I think the train part is easily the part everyone should check out. You got any more? Nope, that's it. The last part thing then is just the final shot of the game where um, she's on the cliff with Billy and they say their goodbyes and she's like, oh, I'll go, I'll go to that mansion over there and look for help. And you can see the mansion in the distance and it gets obscured by a spider web and it's like very like ominous music plays. You're like, oh yeah, of course, that's the mansion from the actual first game. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. That's a cool shot. Yeah. It's no Resident <laughs> Evil 1, it's no Resident Evil 2, it's no Resident Evil 4. In the rankings, it would go quite low, Resident Evil 0. You know, it would, wouldn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 de definitely, yeah, definitely. But hey, if you've got different thoughts, let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash gbhbl as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal, what else is life for?